Hey folks, this is Rich from Pacific, and today I'm starting a new series of video tutorials that will show you how to make your own Sampire character in the game Ultima Online. Now I've done a few other videos showing you some of the details of my own Sampire character that I play on Pacific, but I decided to do these a little differently in that I'm going to show you step by step how to get started on your own. From character creation, training your skills, getting the right gear, and some basics on how to play the infamous Sampire build. So as this video series progresses, I'll show you the tips and techniques that I use to quickly and efficiently make a great new character build that will more than likely become your main go-to when it comes to playing Ultima Online. Now these videos are intended for both new and veteran players, and if you find something useful in this content, please remember to hit the YouTube like and subscribe buttons. As always, various topics will be linked in the description below for quick reference. So in this first episode, I'm going to give you an introduction of what a Sampire is, and what our target skills are going to be, and why we would pick them in the first place. I'm also going to walk through the character creation steps and show you some tricks on how to jumpstart your training process. So let's get started. Now at its core, what a Sampire is, is a Samurai Vampire, or Sampire. Uh, it had its early roots when Age of Shadows came out in early 2003 with the introduction of the Necromancy skill in Ultima Online. Uh, necromancy has a spell called Vampiric Embrace, which allows you to turn into a vampire, and there's various advantages to that. Um, shortly after, about a year later, uh, the Samurai Empire expansion came out in about November of 2004, and that introduced the Bushido skill, which allowed your character to take on aspects of a samurai. So before we go any further with this video, uh, a quick disclaimer. There are about as many variations of the Sampire as there are skills in Ultima Online. Uh, it's been around for quite some time. Lots of people have tried different skill combinations and different ways and techniques to make it work for them. What I'm going to be going over is what I call the classic Sampire build, which really just covers a lot of offensive and defensive abilities and really just kind of an all-around great template to get started with this. Uh, I highly encourage you to explore different options and ways to make the build work for you. Some of it will depend on the, the scrolls that you have available or the gear you have available or things you might just want to try differently. So I encourage you to leave comments or drop me videos on suggestions on other builds that you may have that differ from this. So here we go. The classic Sampire build consists of seven main skills, and that would be Swordsmanship, Tactics, Bushido, Necromancy, Parrying, Resisting Spells, and Chivalry. Now as far as Swordsmanship, it's pretty much the favorite go-to uh, melee skill to take for your Sampire, and the reason why is that there are many more uh, high damage weapons that fit with the Bushido abilities that you will get as a Sampire, such as the Double Axe or the Radiant Scimitar. Uh, you can use fencing, you can use macing, you can even use archery, although the archery template would probably look a little bit different. But for the most part, I'm going to stick with swordsmanship on this video tutorial. In my opinion, it has the best results. You do the most amount of damage, and it's easy to make and find these weapons. Um, so these are all real skill values. So swords would be 120, tactics 120. And the reason why you want to do that is because if we plan on using the swords mastery that is available in Time of Legends, those real skill values will give you uh, a larger inherent bonus with the mastery skills. Uh, Bushido is used as the uh, magic ability of a samurai and what Bushido does is it allows you to, it does a few things. First of all it allows you to parry without a shield uh, just using a, either a single-handed or a dual-handed weapon. Um, so if you're pairing, if you're wielding a single-handed weapon and you have Bushido of at least uh, 50 or 60, you can parry with a slight uh, percentage. 
the higher your Bushido, uh, the more likely you'll be able to parry with that weapon. Uh, it also gives some passive bonuses to a special ability known as Whirlwind. And the Whirlwind attack is pretty much the Sampire's main go-to um, spawn um, attack. So what it does is when you're surrounded, you can use the Whirlwind ability and it'll attack all the enemies around you. Uh, if you have a high Bushido, and you're surrounded by many enemies, you do additional damage to those enemies, and it, it's quite substantial. Uh, necromancy, of course, is the skill that we use to get Vampiric Embrace, and um, if you're not familiar at all about the Sampire build, we're going to use Necromancy as our only method of healing in this. So notice that there's no healing, there's uh, no other Majory ability, this is how we're going to heal. Uh, Vampiric Embrace gives you 20% health for, uh, for all the damage you do. So if you hit an enemy for 100 points, you'll receive 20 hit points back. Um, so with a Sampire that's swinging very quickly, especially using Whirlwind, um, you can heal pretty much through anything. Um, you don't want to get hit too hard, but Necromancy does a pretty good job. Pairing, of course, allows us to parry, um, and resisting spells, it doesn't, uh, re people are often confused about resisting spells, it doesn't actually negate damage from spells, so if somebody casts an energy bolt at you, you're still going to take the full da uh, damage from that energy bolt, even though you have, you know, maximum resisting spells, but what it does for the Sampire is a couple things. Uh, mainly, it keeps us from being mana drained all the time, and you'll see as we go through these videos that mana is very important to a Sampire. It allows you to keep doing your special abilities. It also keeps us from being paralyzed, and in certain cases, it reduces the damage that we take from spells like Blood Oath. Um, chivalry is also critical to a Sampire in that there are several chivalry spells that we'll use all the time. Uh, mainly, Consecrate Weapon, which changes our weapon type to be the elemental type that our enemy is weakest to. And also, things like Enemy of One, which allow us to increase our damage uh, output to a monster uh, quite, uh, quite significantly. Chivalry also allows us to travel around using Sacred Journey and to do things like resurrect other players, etc. Now, I have the Optimize skill uh, build over here, um, and I call it Optimize because um, ideally, if you have the scrolls to get to 120 in you know, most of these, you'll want to be able to get it, but you won't have enough points. So the way to do that is you want to take real skill in your core uh, three skills so swords tactics and bushido and that's because you will either be using the swords mastery or the bushido mastery and by having real skill in those you get the maximum bonus um, parrying and resist you can lock at 90 and add 30 skill points in either your ring or bracelet uh, combined of course to give you 120 in, in parry and 120 in resist. So the optimized classic Sampire build would be 120 swords, 120 tactics, 120 Bushido, real skill, 100 necromancy, 120 parry using the skill items, 120 resist using the skill items, and then 80 chivalry. The reason why we lock chivalry at 80 is because that is the minimum skill required for Consecrate Weapon to work 100% of the time. Now, as I said before, there are many different uh, variations of the Sampire build, and I'm not going to be able to list them all, and I'm sure you've, you've maybe heard of one or have gotten different information from different people. Uh, but this is one, I'm going to call it the ultimate, alternate damage focus build, because uh, it focuses on, instead of resist, we're going to include anatomy, which will give us quite a bit of damage increase. Uh, remember that the more damage we do, the more we heal, and therefore 
the tougher we are to kill. Um, you are sacrificing, of course, resisting spells, so you may be mana drained or paralyzed at a very inconvenient time. So a lot of times I will maybe swap out my um, resist for anatomy uh, if I'm if I know I'm fighting an enemy that um, doesn't cast spells, uh, like per Chief Peroximus, for example, is a good one. Um, also, sometimes people like to go with Chivalry at 120, and then they lower their parrying. So this is more of an offensive build um, with less focus on defense. Um, you can still get up to 90 parry or more uh, with items with this build. So you, you still do parry quite a bit, but um, with Chivalry 120, you're going to get the, the most out of spells like Enemy of One. Uh, you're going to do the most damage uh, increase to a single uh, target monster. Um, so this is a, a good, um, you know, honorable mention in terms of the build. But I'm going to be focusing on the first classic vampire build, which will use resisting spells and uh, lock chivalry at 80. All right, so let's get into the character creation. Uh, since we're starting this character from scratch. Um, I'm going to walk you through what the ideal uh, starting settings will be for your new Sampire. Uh, the first thing is race. Um, most of the races work, but a lot of times the best choice here is Elf. And the reason why we choose an Elf is because the Elf has an inherent bonus to its mana. So you'll get an additional 20 mana points simply by being an Elf. Um, it also allows us to have a few options in terms of craftable armor that will help us get started with our Sampire. Uh, plus, you have uh, night vision. So it's all around. There's really no disadvantage to using an elf. Uh, so I will choose elf. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to make this character a female. And the reason why is since we're making this tune for spawning and other things, um, the elf female is pretty much the most popular sampire template because um, again you get the, the mana from being an elf and there is one particular champ boss that um, will do extra damage to you if you're a male character so it makes it pretty much impossible to fight it solo but if you're a female you can take it on pretty easy that's the semidar um, demon spawn so we're gonna choose female elf and move to the next screen. So on this screen, it's pretty important. What you want to do is select Customize. And we're not going to choose any of the obvious combat ones because those are those are pretty easy to gain in-game um, or just buying them up. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to change the first one to uh, Bushido. And the second one we're going to change to Necromancy. And the reason why I'm choosing these is because they're kind of the more pain-in-the-butt skills to, to grind out, especially Bushido. So um, we're going to lower these other skills all the way down, and we're going to start with 50 Bushido, 50 Necromancy. Uh, and under Healing, I'm going to change this to... Uh, swords just so we start off with a little bit um, obviously this third uh, fourth one doesn't matter because we're gonna have zero skill in it um, now under stats this is also pretty important you want to give yourself a little bit of the stats are gonna change as we as we train this character so uh, the end result will be you'll have an intelligence that's locked at 10 but since we're going to have to train necromancy um, we're going to let this rise, but we need a little bit initially to kind of get going. Um, and strength, you want to boost up to at least 50. So what I like to do is kind of have 50 strength and 20, 20. Let's see, look at this. Something like that will work. So we get just enough dexterity to, you know, be able to swing a, a really fast swords weapon to get started when we do. And we have enough intelligence to cast uh, Sacred Journey when we're getting ready to start training. So that's what you want to kind of start with. We'll get you a nice jump start. 
Next, we're going to select some sort of face. This doesn't really matter. I'm going to make her kind of a dark elf uh, with feather and black hair. There we go. And then, you know, you can change between facets. You're going to want to start a new haven. And the next part will be just to name your character. Okay, so the sticks part, we're going to do a basic um, enhanced client setup for our new Sampire character. Um, this initial part is more, we're going to just go over the layout, then I'm going to show you some of the, you know, uh, gotta have settings in enhanced client that make your life as a Sampire much easier. So a lot of this it may be to taste, uh, but I'll show you kind of how I set up mine and how I like it. Um, I want to kind of remove these gumps. Um, so this will really depend on how much screen real estate you have. Um, so the first thing I like to do is I do not like the enhanced clients um, legacy grid containers. It makes it so you can't resize them um, and kind of give it that old school pack look. Some people like that. I do not. So the first thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is go into user settings and under containers. I'm going to disable the legacy grid containers and hit apply. And you can see what that'll do is it'll kind of take that um, old school look away and allow me to have these kind of resizable packs and that affects all containers. So that's it's very useful and one of, in my opinion, one of the big benefits of um, enhanced client is these improved packs. Um, so the thing that um, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the targeted box. So you do that by just selecting something on the screen and you can see by default it has it locked here at the top of the screen. I'm going to want to move that down to the bottom because this is something you want to keep right in your visible line of sight. Um, and so again, these are just my own personal preferences. You can lay these screens out however you like, but what I like to do is kind of move this over to the corner and I'll try to stack my um, bars up and I'll just move things where they relatively want to be. And I'll stack these down at the bottom and I'll move the up to the top and then I kind of maximize my play screen area so this is just something that I do um, again if you have a particular layout that you prefer um, by all means you know you should use it the most important thing here is that you have all of these aspects on the screen um, so I like to kind of put my personal health bar up in the corner and I'll lock it and then I'll put the um, um, combat shield underneath and you want to also make sure that these buff and debuff bars are somewhere where you know they're plainly visible now what's kind of nice about these is you can rotate them so if you prefer like a vertical um, setting or upside down you can you can change these how you like but this is normally how I lay out mine I'll get it so all the buffs go this way and all the debuffs go that way and I'm gonna lock them in place. I'm gonna lock the mobile bar somewhere and then hide it because it's kind of annoying. Um, the pet bar you also wanna kinda of keep locked on the screen. Um, you will have a pet, hopefully you'll be using a swamp dragon. And then I'll give myself enough space down on this so that there's room underneath it uh, and I'll lock it there. So that's the basic layout that I like to use. Um, and now we'll get into the actual EC settings. Um, now there's several of them here that are worth talking about. So I'm just gonna give you a generic setup and we'll, we'll talk about more as we progress with this character. But um, first thing I'm gonna do is go into options and turn on always run because that's very helpful. And then I'm also gonna turn on always attack. Um, now, always attack basically says that when you're in war mode, anything that you target or select with the um, as a targeted um, item, it's basically like double-clicking them, so it automatically attacks them. Um, 
this can be problematic for some types of builds, but for the Sampire or any warrior, especially one where you're holding a sword, um, this is really invaluable. Um, I've showed in other videos that this is basically how I fight monsters in the game is I, I don't click them I'll use always attack but we'll get more into that in a little bit more um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply there I'm also gonna block war on pets and party um, I don't need to automatically kill my pet accidentally and then I'm gonna go into uh, health bars and I'm going to always show health and mana, so that makes it so that I see my numbers here instead of just the, the color bars. And I'm going to disable the notoriety aura, which is kind of annoying. Um, I'm also going to disable this mobile, mobile arrow. I don't need to see that on the screen. Generally, I think that's all I change in here. And then we go on to the most important one, which is the input. So, since this is a Sampire, we're going to be doing massive amounts of champion spawns and other large combat scenarios. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to utilize the scroll wheel um, for most of the things you do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say scroll wheel up, and that is scroll wheel on the mouse, um, will be target last enemy, and then scroll wheel down will be target next enemy and I'm going to hit apply and real quick I'll show you how that works is that now I've done that um, if I select some I don't have any enemies on the screen but I'll show you here in a little bit um, so then I'm going to change my war mode I'm going to these are the standard ones I use so toggle war mode will be control and tab uh, it's just what I like uh, primary attack and secondary attack, I'm going to remove those because I'm going to put them on my hotbar. Uh, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just remove a lot of these. And so under target next enemy, I'm going to use the tilde key. And under target nearest enemy, I'm going to use the tab key. We'll talk in detail about these a little bit when we get into the combat training, but these are super important. Target n nearest enemy and target next enemy. So those in conjunction with always attack will allow me to just go into war mode, hit a key, and run up to a, something and start attacking it without having to click on it, pull up its hotbar, or anything like that. Um, so some of the other settings I do, I just kind of leave some of these other ones I never use. Um, I don't want C to pull up my character window. I don't want this one on backpack. I don't want my skill menu. I do want to keep the map key. And I'm going to get rid of the quest log. I'm going to hit apply. So I also will use the control, left control, quite a bit. And some of these, that's where I keep my hands. So I'm going to get rid of these defaults. I definitely don't want toggle, toggle interface because it can really uh, mess things up for me. Uh, or reload interface. Uh, and all of these I'm just going to remove. And hit apply. Uh, let's see, so under graphics, one thing I recommend that if you get a pretty decent computer of any sort, really, it doesn't even have to be that great, I suggest changing your max frame rate to 60 FPS. Um, it makes it so that the, you move smoother. Um, showing foliage is also kind of a, something you want to do. Um, you can set a key to toggle this, especially if your computer's running a little slow, you can turn that off. Um, Things like particle effects and those sorts of things. I've got an all right video card, so I, I keep them on. But if you've got a slower laptop or something that's not really gamed as a gaming PC, you might want to set these to a medium or low or turn them off entirely. Uh, let's see. So under sound, I enable sound, sound effects. I like to turn the music off. And under options, was there anything else I missed? So I'm using a custom UI. There's really, I can go into detail a little bit with this later. I've only made a few modifications, but they're not really important. This is mostly a stock um, EC experience. I am going to turn the tool tips off and make sure tip of the day is turned off. And I want to keep Windows Snap on. Um, 
and that's it. So now I've got my basic setup here. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is add a new or a couple new hotbars. So I'm going to say new hotbar, and I found the easiest to just add a one by one and then change the size because it's unclear about um, you know which one it means. And then I will get rid of these key assignments. So you hit assign key and then escape and get rid of them all. Because I don't really want to use the F keys like that. And then what I'm going to do is make 4x4. Four four, and you can see it'll... it this way there we go and I'll lock these so that they stay all nice and aligned there you go uh, so now that I have my basic layout I'm going to create a few basic macros to help me to help me start uh, start out here so the first thing I'm going to do is create a macro for um, opening my bank and how I do that is I say new macro and one thing I didn't know with this is the actions menu that comes up. You can actually click on the center thing and you can see Check. all the menu options. So I'm going to select on communication. And I'm not going to just say bank. I want to actually say something custom. So I'm going to grab this say over here. And I'm going to say bank guards rexu rectu. Now, if you don't know, rexu and rectu are used when you're traveling between Papua and the second age of lands. So it's very useful to have it on a single click. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a key assignment of control B. That way I can open my bank very quickly. Good. So another thing I'm going to do is make a macro for confidence, which is an Bushido ability. Um, now I'm going to combine this with the open door macro, which makes it very easy to navigate through doors and quickly heal myself using confidence when I need. So I'm going to select other, find open door, and then right after put the confidence icon, name it open confidence. And then I'm going to assign it to spacebar. That way I can run up to a door, hit spacebar, it opens a door. It also heals me or runs confidence. Very handy. So another thing I want to do is arrange my skills and turn on the tracker. So the tracker is very helpful, allows me to see what skills are on the screen or what, what skills that I'm working with and where my points are being spent. And in Enhanced Client, you can assign your skills into the Custom tab, which kind of makes it easier when I'm trying to set things up or down. So you can go through these and determine what skills that I want to use and that I want to show in my custom tab. So we're going to add tactics, swords, parrying. We're also going to need uh, Bushido, of course, chivalry, resisting spells. We're going to use meditation for training, so I'm going to put that there too. Uh, focus for training. And of course, necromancy. should be it so now you can see if I click custom these are all the skills that are relevant to the Sampire build plus meditation and focus that we will later lower after we're done with our magic training now I'm gonna look at my character sheet and initially they're all set to going up so the first thing we're going to do in this training is raise strength. Um, uh, but later, while we're training necromancy, we're going to also raise intelligence to make that easier. 
Um, after that's said and done, we'll then be lowering intelligence and raising dexterity instead. Uh, it's helpful to have more intelligence while we're training necromancy and chivalry just so that we have a larger mana pool to deal with. So we're going to start off with locking dexterity. Uh, I just want to go through and make sure that all my skills are set to up. And there we go. All right, so what's next is since we're here in New Haven, uh, we're going to go and use some of the NPCs here to buy up some of our skills and give us kind of a jump start into our training. So this is where it kind of helps to, to start with, not necessarily on a brand new server, having a little bit of gold um, ahead of time helps. So I'm going to take about 7,000 gold. And if you're not aware, which you probably are, but there are several NPCs in New Haven that allow you to buy your skills up to about 40. Um, so the first one we're going to do is we're going to find the Chivalry um, NPC, and that's on the top floor of this kind of training building here. And we're going to go over to the Chivalry, the Paladin Guildmaster. And we're going to say, train chivalry. And he's going to say, hey, give me 400 gold pieces. And, oops, what did I do? Oh, there we go. So I'm going to give him 400 guild, gold pieces. And he's going to raise my chivalry to 40. Now, this is kind of one of the first things you want to do. Because chivalry is how we're going to basically be getting around initially, but it's also pretty critical to the Sampire build in general. Um, if you recall, um, our target chivalry is going to be 80, so this gets us halfway there. Um, once I've done that, I'm going to go talk to the chivalry instructor, and I'm going to buy from him a book of chivalry. Uh, what's nice about this is it comes with all the spells. You don't go have to hunt down scrolls or anything so you'll have all the spells initially um, now I'm then going to uh, I'm gonna buy the rest of the skills from him whatever he'll train so he he says he'll give me uh, up to 40 in so I'm gonna give him 200 for swords you can see now I have 40 swords uh, I'm going to also train resist I'm gonna give him 400 to get 40 in resist and tactics, same thing. So basically, whenever you're starting a new character, it doesn't really hurt to to buy up these skills as much as you can, even if you don't intend on using them, because getting max skill points allows us to kind of ping pong skills back and forth, as you could, you'll see later when we're training our resist. This is helpful. Um, so look to make sure, um, you know, you could buy these, but I'm going to also train parrying. He won't give me a full 40. He'll give me 31.1. So that's good. Now I'm going to run downstairs here, and I'm going to go to the Ankh. And I'm going to tithe gold. Now, again, this is helpful to have gold on your character. Hopefully, this isn't your first character. Um, so you have some gold saved up. But if not, you know, you could start small. Maybe maybe do this a little bit later. But I'm going to go ahead and tithe 50,000 gold pieces. That should be plenty for all the chivalry training I'm going to need. So if I open up my chivalry book, I'll see I have 50,000 tithing points available. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go and create another utility macro uh, for Sacred Journey. And Sacred Journey is like recall for uh, paladins. So what you do is you create a new macro, you open up your book, and you drag it over. And you notice that in EC, um, you'll see these color bars around the square. Green means it's going to ask you for a target. You can set the target, but for this particular macro, I'm going to leave it on green because I just want to be able to hit my sacred journey and then select what I want to recall off of. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just do that, and I'm going to give it the hotkey of left control R. So now when I hit left control R, I cast Sacred Journey, and then I can target what the rune or the rune book that I want to uh, journey from. Um, there are some other ones that I'm going to add to my hotbar right now. So these are useful um, chivalry spells I'll be using later. Um, so Consecrate Weapon, um, I want to put here, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to go up here into my character abilities, and I'm going to use my primary ability on this key, and my secondary ability over here. So what I like to do with my layout is I kind of map them to how their position on the keyboard. So primary ability, I'm going to assign this to W, or Q, sorry. Uh, consecrate, I'm going to assign to W. And secondary ability, I'm going to assign to E. So that's QWE right there along the keyboard. Um, you'll see that I can't actually use my primary ability yet or my secondary because I don't have enough skill in the weapon yet. But um, this just sets it up for later. However, since I'm wielding a weapon, I can um, cast Consecrate. So um, you can do this now if you like, but basically you can train Chivalry by just using Consecrate over and over and over again. And you can see I'm going up. You could take it to about 50 or 60 that way, and I highly recommend you spend a few, uh, an hour or so doing that, uh, just to get your chivalry up to at least 50, um, so that it, it, you don't fail as much when you're trying to, uh, Sacred Journey. Um, so the other skills I'm going to buy up here, let's go down to the bottom and let's see if, um, any of these guys give me more. Uh, nope, I don't want any of that. No, get away, get away. Where is it? Oh, they're down here. So we can see that we have the Swordsmanship Instructor. I don't think he'll give us any more, but we'll be talking to him in a second. But he will give me a little more parry. So I'm going to definitely do that. And we'll go check the Tactics Instructor and say no he's not giving us anything and we'll go over here to the parry instructor i don't think he has anything for us nope all right so basically we're we bought those up this sounds good okay so i kind of messed up a little bit already on this is where uh i earlier i bought up resist and i actually don't want any resist here the problem is I can't lower my resist until I get the rest of my points um, bought up. So what I'm going to do, and I, I recommend doing this anyway, um, is I'm going to actually buy up. I'm going to go back and uh, set all of my skills to... Uh, lock all skills. Uh, I can't. All right, so I'm going to... Go ahead and set all these skills up, and then I'm going to buy other skills so that I've reached my, my, my points available to be zero. Now, this can be a little bit tedious. That's why I got a bunch of gold. Um, what I'm going to do is just find these same NPCs, and I'm going to train anatomy. And he's saying, ah, uh, you can't do it because we locked. Uh, so what you got to do is go in and set some of these up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, raise all of these ones on the combat page because I'm sitting right here in the combat area so now I should be able to train anatomy to 40 by giving him 400 gold and I'm gonna do that for healing and the goal here is just to basically use up all of my points so that I have max um, max points used and you'll see why here in a, in a little bit when we get into training resist um, it's also important that uh, before we take any of the quests uh, to incre uh, increase our skill raising ability to 50 uh, you want to buy up basically as much as you can um, so this is a good tactic i use is just to basically fully buy up all your points uh, with skills and then you take the skills you don't want and you set them to go down. So we'll just 
find out if there's anything here. Yep, he has fencing. Alright, I need 240 still. Uh, we could train archery here. Um, he also does bow crafting, so I might as well go ahead and do that one. Uh, that's under trade. Uh, here it is. So train fletching. Uh, 167 to go. Uh, let's look at the blacksmith. He'll do blacksmithing. So I'll go ahead and raise blacksmithing. Set that to go up. And train blacksmithing. And he's saying 258. So in case you didn't notice, um, it is essentially one gold piece per point, uh, point of skill. Not full point, but point one. Um, let's see, weapons trainer. Oh, he has a bunch of stuff here. So let's do blacksmithing, and he'll give us another. And wrestling. So I still need 104 points. Mace fighting. Uh, arms lore and item identification. And so those are under trade. So here and where's item identification? Is that under thief? Was I just looking at it? Magic. Where is oh miscellaneous? Huh. I don't even think that skill's used anymore. All the more reason. And then arms lore. Three hundred and thirty-five. And I'm four points off, so I need to find one more. Uh, we'll run over here and we'll get the rest in hmm. get the rest in fishing uh, so we'll go into wild and raise fishing and we'll ask him to train it and he's saying only 37 because um, I only have 3.7, so good. Now I'm max stats. So uh, what I want to do is lock all skills and set resist spells to go down. Now I'm going to have to find a different set of skills that I haven't already done. And to do that, I'll go over to the Carpenter and Lumberjack. It's right outside. And let's see, I'm going to under trade. I'm going to set carpentry to go up and lumberjacking to go up. So now I have lumberjacking and carpentry set to up and resist spells set down. Everything else is locked. And I'm going to ask him to train lumberjacking and he says 231 points 231 cold and now you could see my resist spells went down to 16 and we'll do the same thing with carpentry and he says 16.9 or, or uh, 169 or 16.9 points so I'll do that and say 169 there finally so now I have zero resist so now I want to go in and make sure that all my skills are set to up that I want. Including resist. And go to all the trade skills that I raised and set them to all go down. And the reason for this will become clear here in a moment when we get into our resist training. Um, we're going to use resisting spells to raise our strength because... 
it raises very quickly by training resist plus we need resist in our template so it's kind of a twofer um, um, and I'll show you that in more detail when I get this done so we're gonna go ahead and lower anatomy lower archery lower fencing uh, keep focus up lower healing keep tactics, we'll keep swords, we'll keep that, we'll go under miscellaneous, we'll lower that. So we just go through and make sure that we're not raising any skill that we, or, or lowering any skill we want and rate, um, lowering the ones we don't want. So there, there, lumberjacking, under magic, we'll keep meditation going up, necromancy, chivalry, there's fishing. All right. So now uh, I have zero points available, which means I can bounce my skills around if necessary. Um, all the skills that I don't want are set to go down, and all the ones I do want are set to go up. Okay, so the first step in our training is going to start off with resist. And the reason why I do this, I mentioned before, is that um, we're going to use resist to not only give us a little bit of resist that we need in our ultimate build, but also uh, resist is very good at raising strength and to some degree dexterity. Uh, for this particular step though, I'm going to lock my dexterity at whatever it is, so right now it's set to 20. Um, I'm going to keep intelligence up and I'm going to set strength up. Um, so to do this the most efficient way, um, what you're going to need is a little bit of gold and you can use the shipwright that's right here and you're going to buy yourself a small boat. Uh, now it does cost 10k gold, so hopefully you have that. Um, if not, there are other ways to do this technique, um, but not as easy as with using a ship. So I'm going to buy a small ship dean the cheapest one they have, and I'm going to end up with that. Uh, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run down here and I'm going to buy myself a horse because running around is kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to buy just a regular old horse. And now that I have the horse, I'm actually going to take this opportunity to create more utility macros. And so I'm going to create one, um, say I'll follow me. And under the actions, you can find it under pet commands, and it's all follow me. Drag it over here, and I'm going to set that to be uh, left alt F. That's just what I use, but you could use whatever you want. And then that way it's much easier to, uh, you'll use that macro later. Um, so now that I have a horse, um, I don't, I'm not going to do any weapons training yet. I'm going to just focus on resist and raising my strength before we move into any sort of weapon skills training at all. Uh, so to do this, what you're going to do is there's a part of New Haven that, um, if you're lucky, in the Old Haven area, um, usually where we're going to go to train our skills to 50, but for now we're just going to go find the spectral spell binders and we're going to get four or five of them to follow us to the shore uh, where we're going to place a boat and we're going to stand on the boat and let them cast spells on us. Uh, now, why these are so great for this is because the spells they cast are not, uh, they're offensive spells, but they're not damaging. So all they really do is curse you and corpse skin and other debuffs. They don't really hurt you. Um, so you can just sit there and be um, cast upon until your resist spells gets to be the way you want. For us, this exercise will be really to raise strength. We want at least 90 strength so that we can equip some of the starter sampire gear that we built for this character. Um, Strength is pretty important for both damage and uh, the ability to uh, wield certain types of armor that may weigh 90 stones uh, or require 90 strength. Not weigh 90 stones, but require 90 strength or sometimes 70. So um, ultimately, our build, we're going to want at least 105 to 110 strength. 
since we only have 225 stat points, we're going to focus on 110. So with 110 strength, we can get cursed and still have over 100 strength available so that we're not dropping any gear that we may have equipped. So to do this, we're going to just get our boat, our ship deed, and get on our horse, and we're going to run into Old Haven. And first of all, we're going to make sure that we see Spectral Spellbinders. I do see one right here, so what I'm going to do is just kind of target him but not attack him. I'm going to get him to follow me. I'm going to find as many of these as I can. Now, they're slow, so you got to be patient. And you can see, even if I don't have a boat, I could just lead these around. And as long as I don't kill them, they're going to continuously cast on me. And they're going to raise my resist. Now remember, you wanted to lock dexterity because you want all of the gains to go to strength. I get another one here. And notice with attack, always attack, I just basically have to highlight them and it will aggro them onto me. So I've got four now following me. Sometimes you kind of have to run around and get it so that they don't lose aggro on you. And there's some more up here. I'm going to grab these guys too. I'm going to get as many to follow me as can. Um, ideally you want f five. I think five or six is the maximum that will stay focused on you at one time anyway. So um, you know the more the merrier. Now you can see somebody else already has this idea. So what I'm going to do is go over here and place my boat. So we're going to face it north, we're going to, there we go, we're going to have to unlock the boat, and then set it like that. Now I'm going to go out of combat, and I'm going to drive the boat down here a little bit, so that they don't have to go as far. You can see there. Now one trick that you might want to do when you're dealing with boats is, I like to do this a lot of times, is you can use the action here and go into other and there's an option to toggle always run. So what I usually do is put it somewhere like here so that if I'm dealing with a boat and I want to get, you can't quick get off boats by in running mode so you have to kind of turn it off and you step on and you'll come out so I'm gonna go and get the rest of my spell binders here I want as many as I can get so that'll give me six Now basically, I'm going to just sit here and occasionally I will open up the mobiles bar or um, go into combat and use my scroll wheel to just kind of aggro the monsters here so that they stay on me. If you see them kind of moving away, then you might need to click on them again to get them to come back. So right now I've got uh, six spell binders casting on me and you can see that my resist spells is going up pretty quick. Um, and what you'll also see is that my strength goes up quite quickly. So you can do this to take resist all the way up to GM. It will take about an hour uh, or so for that to happen. Um, but I'm going to basically do this until I at least get 100 strength. Um, and then uh, I can move on to my combat training. So... As you can see, I'm sitting here, and we're still graining resist, and we're still graining strength, and I'm up to 76. Um, one of the things I want, want to point out, just if you want to save time, uh, if you recall earlier, we made a macro for using confidence. Um, 
and I assigned it to my spacebar. So this makes it really easy to just kind of spam train. One thing with Bushido is that you can actually raise it to 60 plus simply by just spamming uh, confidence over and over. And there's no there's no real uh, timer on it. It it is mana dependent though. So when you run out of mana, you won't be able to cast it. Uh, if you're wearing no gear like I am right now, it takes 12 mana in order to run. Uh, but it's something to do while you're just sitting here waiting for your spell binders to uh, cast a bunch of spells on you. So what I'll do is I'll just sit here and spam confidence. And, you know, occasionally gain in both meditation and Bushido. Um, just uh, optimal use of your time. If anything, it raises your meditation faster so that you'll gain med, uh, med and int faster for when we uh, train necromancy. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes or so. Um, as you can see, I'm still here letting my resist drain. I'm making sure I move around every now and then and target them just so I don't idle out. Um, uh, also remember, you never want to play uh, Ultima Online uh, unattended, so make sure you're always, you know, at least looking at the screen, even if you're doing nothing like this. Um, so, as you can see, I'm up to about 88 strength, and my resist is now about 73.7. I've gained quite a bit in focus and a bunch in meditation. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I need another... Um, you know 10 15 points or so in strength before I move on so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to kind of fast track this a little bit um, so what I'm gonna do is leave this area and I'm gonna go back to New Haven and since we spent the time to buy up all of our skills initially what we can easily do is bounce our resist down to zero again and um, start from zero so that we get a lot more gains and therefore a lot more uh, potential for strength gains. So what I'm going to do is go back to New Haven. I want to lock all skills, lower resist, and go back to trade. And I'm going to then focus on blacksmith arms lore. So I'm going to leave this guy. and go to the blacksmith. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, make sure you, before you do this, you lock all your skills so that you don't have to go through each one and, and check them again. So I'm going to train blacksmith, and he says for 400. Now you can see... My resist is now down to 33.9. Now I'm going to need a little bit more gold to finish this off. Okay. And I want to keep that raised and go back to my blacksmith. And I'm going to train arms lore. And now you can see I have zero or next to nothing in resist. So that's good enough for me. Um, I'm going to set it back to raise. I'll set all my skills I want back up to raise. And then I go to those trade skills that I just bought and I'm going to set them to go down. Okay. So now that I have next to nothing in resist again, I will go back and repeat. Now what you can do since you placed a boat is you could just uh, sacred journey to the key. Since I don't have a lot of chivalry, it may take a few tries. There we go. Cool. So now I'm going to try to get more um, spell binders back on me so this goes faster. You want you want five if you can. Sometimes if you have those um, 
Mongbats around, they'll they'll take up a spot for the spellbounder. So what you can do is try to kill them. Just remember I have no no gear and no skills right now, so if you can do that, great. If you can't, then just uh just bear with it. Okay, and then you go back here. And we'll basically start again. And we should see much uh, faster strike. Now I've reset my resist all the way down to zero um, and it's going quick. Um, now I'm just going to wait more till I get the strength that I want. Okay, so now I have reached the strength that I wanted, which is 110. Uh, you can see because I'm cursed or whatever, weakened, and I have negative 9, but I still have 101 strength. So that means I have a total 110. I went and locked it, which is what you want to do. And then I can basically just leave this area and run back to New Haven. And once the curses wear off, I will have my full strength and I can move on with my training. Now one thing um, you'll see is since I reset my resist, I am s still down to 36.4. Um, so if you want, you can just let it continue to get GM resist. It'll save you some time from doing it later. You're going to have to do that same exercise eventually to get the resist that you want. Um, but I wanted to at least start with 110 strength so that I could move on with my training and get into combat. So that's resisting spells.